Hi, okay. Welcome to another of my cozy fireside chats. So not too much brain work today with this. Um, for those of you that perhaps haven't seen any of these yet, or um, those of you who are following me, I'm now going to endeavor to stream them from my Penny Dix Astrologer and Life Coach page. I'm not sure if I'm doing that with this one or not, but I'm sure some techie person out there will tell me if I'm doing it or not. <clears throat> Maybe Andrea Britton, you can help me. Okay, so I asked the question today of myself, and it's because of some other stuff that's come up um, with people that have been in touch with me for help with anxiety and worries and problems. Um, what is destiny? What is fate? Or do we have free will? And I thought, you know, these are actually, these are questions I feel have no particular answers. Um, you know, we could get into a very deep debate about the different areas of destiny, fate, free will. Um, but it's actually, the root of it is about how can we live with the uncertainty of life? That is the problem that I think most of us face at some point or other is the fact that life is pretty uncertain. Um, especially with this COVID crisis, we've really all had to face the fact that, that we can't guarantee or see that fate or destiny or that we have any choice about anything in the matter. But I want to start with a, the first paragraph from a book called The Road Less Travelled by M. Scott Peck who was a psychotherapist and a pretty interesting guy. And in his first paragraph, I think he says something very profound that certainly had a big effect on me. And here we go, this is it. Life is difficult. This is a great truth. One of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. So what does that exactly mean? So I thought about this. And for me, it would be something like, um, when I really want something, or I really don't want something, if I keep being fixed about how I think it should unfold, or I don't want a certain thing to happen, um, it, it keeps me locked in that problem. Whereas if I let go of the outcome of that problem, of whether I will actually get whatever it is I want or not get what I don't want, then by letting go, that in a sense means it, I make it less of a problem. And I find when I let things go, often they will come, whatever it is that I don't want, or whatever it is that I do want, but in a way usually that I can handle or I can manage, or in a way that may be different perhaps from what I had um, rigidly expected of the outcome. So there is something in the letting go. There is something in the, as I've mentioned before, the giving it over uh, to something else, to the universe, whatever it is that that you want to give it over to. By doing that, by letting it go, we actually let it go within ourselves. So whether, even if we don't get something that we truly, truly want, um, say a relationship with a particular person, somehow in that act of letting go, even if we don't get what we want with that person, suddenly it actually isn't such a problem. And we find a way to understand and accept and see perhaps that life is trying to take us in a different way. 
because we always have choice and that goes for everyone we all have choices and sometimes what we find so difficult is living with the consequences of our choices so what i thought i would do which is really keeping this one very brief today i'm just going to read you a very short story which may or may not leave you with something to think about so some of you may know this story and for me it's one of those stories that just makes me go oh okay and it's called the appointment in samara and this is how it was retold by w somerset morn in 1933 and in this very short story the speaker is death and it starts there was a merchant in baghdad who sent his servant to market to buy provisions and in a little while the servant came back white and trembling and said master just now when i was in the marketplace i, I was jostled by a woman in the crowd and when i turned I saw that it was death that jostled me. And death looked at me and made a threatening gesture. Now, I'm really frightened. Please let me have your horse and I'll ride away from this city and avoid my fate. I'll go to Samara and there death will not find me. So the merchant, feeling sorry for his servant, let him borrow his horse and the servant mounted and he dug his spurs in its flanks and as fast as the horse could gallop, off he went to Samara. Then the merchant thinking about this went back down to the marketplace himself and he saw death standing in the crowd and he went right up to death and said, why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant when you saw him this morning? That was not a threatening gesture, said Death. I was just very surprised. I was astonished to see him in Baghdad because I've got an appointment with him later tonight in Samara. Thank you. <laughs>